past our forefathers. It gives you strength knowing that their background and their life. And I want to share my testimony. I was born in 1945. I'm a part of the great dispensation. If I'd have been born a year later, I'd have been a part of the baby boomer generation. So I come out of a generation that knew the Great Depression, World War II, and possibly even World War I. We tend to be a little bit uh, old fashioned and conservative. And there's nothing wrong with that. When I was a year and a half old, we moved to Clarence, Missouri, a farm seven miles south of town. So I was raised as a farmer. I remember as a child going to an old country church on Sunday mornings. I remember the vacation Bible school that they had. I remember the peanut butter and crackers and Kool-Aid that we had for refreshments. We went to that church until they had decided we weren't going to go anymore. The farmers all went there and they all wore overalls. And when they started wearing pants and shirts and ties, he said, wasn't nothing but a dress up contest and he wouldn't go. So we didn't go to church for quite some time. But then when I got to be a junior in high school, my mom and I decided we would go to church. And we drove into town and went to church and I I heard the gospel there, but I don't know. They was more interested in church membership and water baptism than there was uh anything else. As a matter of fact, uh, if they had a revival service they never given an invitation to to receive Christ, they always give an invitation to join the church and be baptized in water. So that just didn't satisfy me, but my senior year, I thought, I'm going to go every Sunday, and surely I'll, I'll find uh, something there that satisfies the, the need of my heart. And I went every Sunday, and I never heard. Maybe they preached it, but I never heard the plan of salvation. So I said, well, they've had their chance. And a month or two later, they called me up and said, we missed you last Sunday. You had, we gave out our perfect attendance buttons for, and we wanted you to come to church this next Sunday so we can give you your perfect attendance button. And I said, I'm not interested. You need to give it to somebody else. So I went out into the world and got involved in what a lot of young people do with the booze and smoking cigarettes and never did do any of that drug stuff and never did never had smoked a joint and never had popped a pill that wasn't prescribed to me but i did like the alcohol got into that and fast cars and i got to the point where i didn't uh, really believe in god anymore But I had a friend of mine married a, a Catholic girl, and they were, boy, I think they were Catholics. I mean, they they didn't eat fish on Friday. They, I mean, I think the Pope, they had a direct line to the Pope. So anyway, uh, he got talking to me about things and wanted to know if I would be interested in finding a little bit more out about God and becoming a Catholic. And I thought, well, I guess I could try. So he set me up. <clears throat> excuse me. He set me up to meet with a Catholic priest, and I went over that first night. Sat down there with with that old priest, and in the conversation, he asked me if I believed in God. I said, "Well, no, I don't really reckon I do anymore." 
he made a very shocking statement. He said, well, if you don't believe in God, there's not much I can do to help you out. But he said, but I want to ask you a question. He said, uh, what about your life? You got a good family? He said, you got anything you're thankful for? He said, what about your family? You got a good family? I said, oh, yeah, got a good family. Mom and dad loves me, and brothers and sisters, everything's good. He said, well, what else you got? He said, you got a good job? I said, yeah, I got a good job, making good money. And he said, and I said, uh, he said, well, what about your health? I said, well, I'm healthy, doing good. And he said, well, you got anything else you're thankful for? And I said, yeah. I said, I, I got a brand new 1965 Chevy Impala. And he said, well, I'll tell you what I want you to do. He said, every night when you go to bed, he said, I want you to do this for me. He said, I want you to say, if God, if you exist, I thank you for a good family. I thank you for a good job and good health. And I thank you for a 1965 Chevy Impala. He said, every night when you go to bed, lay your head on the pillow, you just say that. Well, I did that for about three months. And after about three months, when I laid down one night, it wasn't, if you exist, that kind of fell away. And I prayed, God, I thank you. For my family for my health and for my job and for my car. I never did find Christ through the Catholic Church. Uh, I memorized all the prayers and I learned all the sacraments and all the stuff, learned the doctrine, but this time of year was coming along and the old priest said, I've got a lot of extra prayers and things I have to do, so I'm going to put off getting you into the church until after Easter. So anyway, I believed in God, but I still didn't have faith in Jesus Christ, didn't know anything about that. But I started dating a, a, a young girl. Her name was Mary. And she was going to the Nazarene College in Kansas, in Olathe, Kansas. I'd go over on weekends and see her. Went over one weekend and they were having revival. Well, when a church college has revival, you don't have a choice as to whether you go or not. So she had to attend the services on Sunday, one Saturday and Sunday. So if I was going to see her, I had to go to church. So I went along with her, and I got there, and well, I was kind of surprised. In the big church, and Warren Rogers was the evangelist, and he was a black gentleman. And he got up, and he already got my attention right off the bat, because the first thing he did to sit down was a saw, like a saw like you used to saw with, an old hand saw. And he got out a fiddle bow and sat down and played how great they are on that saw and had perfect pitch. Well, if you know my background, my family, they, we played guitars and banjos and fiddles. And we even used to play the saw too, but never as good as him. So I thought, wow, this is something else. So I really paid attention. And he got up and preached, and he presented Jesus to me in a way I had never heard before. I had always thought you had to be good enough to go to heaven. And I tried, and I tried to be good enough. <laughs> but you know the thing about that? You can never be good enough. It never did satisfy me. But he, he preached that I needed a, a savior. Well, I, I was too proud, evidently, to go forward at the invitation at the end. But on my way home from Olathe back to Centralia, 
I was driving along there on Interstate 70 about the Blue Springs exit in my 1968, believe it or not, Ford, Galaxy Fastback, running about 70 miles an hour, and I finally just cried out, God, if I'm going to make heaven, you're going to have to come do it in me somehow because I can't do it. I just can't. I just can't. Now, that's no fancy prayer. But in, in saying that, I was saying, God, I surrender myself to you. And I want you to be in my, my life and come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And when I did that, well, I tell you, the tears started flooding down my cheeks. I tell you, what a terrible I mean, what a tremendous pressure was taken off of my heart. I was listening to KHSB, I think it was a radio station. They take requests. And when I said that, I heard the most beautiful choir singing on my radio on my car. And I thought, wow, that's just a wonderful, beautiful song. I think I'm going to pause here just for a minute and get the name of that so I can request it. Well, I said, no, I'm having too good of a time with the Lord, so I didn't catch the name of that song. I thought they'll play it again. But you know, I've never heard that song again on my radio. And it was such a beautiful choir thing. I tell you, you can't even believe it. Sometimes these people send these videos or these recordings of they say that when angels are singing in heaven it sounded a lot like that you know the scripture says that the angels in heaven rejoice when someone receives jesus as the lord and savior and so i think i heard the angels singing on my radio that night and i've done my best to serve him ever since god hooked up into the Nazarene church, the little church there in Clarence, and went to that for a while. Then when Mary and I got married and moved it down to Centralia, we started going to a church, Nazarene church there in Columbia. And we went there for a few years, and then in the early 70s, the charismatic movement come along. We got filled with the Holy Spirit got very involved in a an independent full gospel church that's a lot like a the Matt the church that Matt preaches. It was a lot like an Assembly of God church. Our basic doctrines were the same. So we served the Lord that way and then we uh, got into the ministry and pioneered two or three churches and got involved there. So the important part of this testimony is, is this. You need to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And once you invite him into your life, I would encourage you every morning when you wake up to acknowledge him and say, Lord, guide me and direct me and keep me this day. And do your best to follow his leading. Your life will be happier. You'll be a, a greater influence on a lot of people around you. And so that's my testimony on salvation. It's a wonderful thing to, to receive the Lord. And I want to share another scripture. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 through 6. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried, talking about Jesus. It was our sorrows that weighted him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion. Crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. 
He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Are you struggling today? Are you struggling today in your Christian life? Oh, we may be struggling in this physical life, but are you struggling in your spiritual life? Jesus, Jesus loved you enough to die on the cross of Calvary for you, for your sins. And for someone who loves you that much, how can we not want to serve him? If I won the lottery and gave you a hundred million dollars, you'd probably think I was pretty special. Well, I tell you what, a hundred million dollars is a drop in a bucket compared to what Jesus has done for you. Impacting in all your sins. So today, cry out to him in your time and say, God, here I am. Forgive me and help me to do better. And he will. I'm going to share one more little testimony. I'm going to share a scripture with you that changed the way I see life and people. Galatians chapter 2, verse 19 through 20. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all these requirements. So that I might live for God. My own self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When we were out in Arizona, that scripture came alive to me in a very special way. Our pastor came in one morning. There were seven of us on staff. And he said, for a month, for a month, we're going to come in at five o'clock in the morning. We're going to have prayer for five hours. Then you're going to have an hour of personal Bible study time. Then we're going to come together as a group and we're going to pray as a group for the needs that are there and for our leaders of our country. And then you will have an hour off for, uh, let me get plugged in here right quick. My phone decided it was going to. Okay, are you, are you still there? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, he said we we're going to pray for, uh, and then we could come back after we're two hours with a study with him teaching us, and then we would go out from about like two o'clock till four o'clock witnessing to the lost. Three days a week was fast days, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We couldn't have anything but water. And the last week of the month was seven days of fasting. And uh, I want you to tell you that uh, that was the most awesome time of my life. It's amazing. 
But in that time, that Galatians 2.20 came alive to me. And I began to see people. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to see people through your eyes. And I suppose he did. And you'd be surprised at uh, how differently you see people. You take your worst enemy. The person that you, I tell you this, you just <laughs> can't stand. They've done terrible, hurtful things to you. Well, if you see them through Jesus' eyes, he sees them and he sees the hurts they've done to you. He doesn't necessarily excuse their hurts, but you know what? He sees the reason why they're acting the way they do. He sees the hurts in their life, the abuses that they've suffered that have caused them to be the mean, greedy, whatever people that they are, the hurtful people. He sees what's caused them to be that way. And then he sees past that. He sees a lost soul that he loved enough that he died on the cross of Calvary for them. And when you do that, when you see them that way, It's kind of hard to respond in anger and hate. Now, I struggle with that. I'll just be honest with you. Sometimes I, if I watch to the news, and I, I've been doing better lately. Now, I'm going to be a little bit political, but one of my people I it really pushed my buttons and push, pull my chains is, is when I see Nancy Pelosi on TV. I, boy, I just get mad. And I say all kinds of bad things about her. But then the Holy Spirit came to me and said, when I look at her through Jesus' eyes, who do you see? You know what my response has to be at that point in time? I have to get down on my knees and pray for her. Pray for God to heal her, to touch her. And if she doesn't know Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, that she might get saved. And that is a much better feeling to be in the anger that I had before. Fill your life with Jesus and his love. Your life will be better. You'll be changed and better. And you'll definitely touch and change the life of many other people. Because they're looking for something. They're looking for Jesus. And they need to see him in your life. And they'll ask you, what's different about you? And you can tell them it's Jesus. He is risen. He is alive. He's my Lord and Savior. And I pray that he's yours. Amen. And Matt, you, can, you might have something to say. I've just unmuted everybody. Here, but here, lady, right here. I can't see myself. <laughs> well, come on. So, Abigail, I see your. Uh, I can't see myself. Well, <laughs> I don't know, Ab. You're going to have to figure it out on your phone. Um, 
is there anybody that would have something that you want to say or in response? Their personal life. So I, I'm hearing bad boys or something like that. <laughs> I'm not on mute. What? <laughs> Mackenzie, are you partying down out there? I told you I'm not a party. I know. I know. I've been listening the whole time. I've been listening the whole time. Don't worry. I know. I know. I, I'm just... um, also, I started one ago. Love that you had a Chevy Impala. Oh, there we are. I did it to see pictures of it. Oh, okay. it, seemed, back on. it seemed like you really loved it. <laughs> yeah, we don't even have pictures of it. Uh, I'll share with you. I'll share one with you. It was white, and it would go 150 mile an hour. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. And how do you know that? Because he. Yeah. yeah. Well, I used to. I used up to. Gap. <laughs> Try it out once. Not with me. The only, only, only way I could tell it. Only way I could tell it was run that fast was with a tachometer and a speedometer, and it would it would wind six thousand three hundred fifty RPMs in a high gear. Wow. Most cars won't wind 6,350 RPMs without the clutch even being engaged. So it was, it was, it was ready to run. So the red line I only supposed to go 5,500 RPM was the red line on it. But hey, you know, it's just shit. Yeah. Let's go down, Frank. <laughs> Let me find you. Come on. <laughs> Your necklaces. All right. I um, got something I want to. I'll say yes. something. Okay. Uh, you know, next year is our 50th wedding anniversary, and I think this is just wonderful that we can all get together this way. But you know, one my one thing, the best gift I could ever have is that if we could all be together on our 50th wedding anniversary. Mm. So next May 1st, and um, I'm just gonna put that in there now. But um, you know. Uh, I don't know if I've ever said, you know, of course I grew up in, you know, Christian family, mom and dad and five older brothers and a sister. And I don't remember exactly the time I got saved. I know I was young, uh -oh. but I can remember it. I, but I can remember when, um, when they would give an altar call at church and my heart, oh, I would just feel so convicted i had to go to that altar and pray i mean it was just the, the holy spirit working in my life and um and you know i probably when i met your dad we probably i probably wasn't living for god like it really should have been uh but i think I, you know we can look back now and see how god had his hand on us well and, if, um, if you had been you might not have picked dad <laughs> at that time <laughs> <laughs> oh who knows but uh it's through the prayers of my mother, I know, that I was kept and that he, you know, he, he got us together. And um, it's not always like it's, it's not always been. Hi. Huh? No. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> let me come off mute. <laughs> I'll, I'll mute. Uh, but, um, uh, hey, there's it's Bradley. Day, hey, Bradley. Everyone oh, wave at Bradley. Sorry. Hi, Bradley. Say hi, Bradley. <laughs> That's it. I have the headphones in, I forget. But he said hi. <laughs> but anyway, that, I didn't really have that much to say. I just, you know, I just, I really, you know, our family is important and I love you all. And so glad we got to do this today. Yes. Yes. Well, I think uh, this was a phenomenal idea that Mark uh yeah that mark oh, had Lord. don't make his head any bigger than it already is well i'm full of good ideas <laughs> so, uh, all of them are in your beard i i just wanted everyone a chance to see my pretty face so. <laughs> yeah i'm gonna uh, uncle mike uh, I'm well when, when, when you're yeah when you're ready to show it you let us know then on that pretty side <laughs> um <laughs> And I think, uh, you know, we don't have to decide this today right now, but I think that this obviously is something that would, 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 would help connect. Uh, I know I, I live the furthest away than everybody, but, um, but we are spread out quite a bit. Where so did this, Ruby go? Doing this, uh, where did, did Ruby sneak off? Where's Crystal? Did Where's Crystal and Ruby? Yeah, Ruby ran off because Jack hollered for her. I don't know. 
Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, oh, there's Crystal. I'm looking on. I'm trying to find her. Okay. Um, so I was, you know, yesterday I kind of joked. Let's maybe we should do this more often than 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 whenever there's a pandemic. Um, and uh, make this a little bit more. And also, and that's a great idea. So uh, I know Abigail was excited to just do this to be able to talk and and um, and see everybody. So. Um, does anyone want to like wave and say I want to say something or uh, have a question for somebody this is well here's one thing I do want to do if Jack can get back on for a moment I, I, I'm, I, I want to take a group picture of everybody yeah and uh, everyone and so yeah we got Al here too so that's great hey McKenzie Wait, even we're if gonna you could, get a picture Bradley Come on. yeah pull Bradley back in there for a moment and uh, let's get Jack off. Uh, he's he's his Wait, they're waiting for Jack. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. So okay, Jack. There. there we go. Wow. Jack. Jack took off. He's in the great forest somewhere. Um, <laughs> so good, good. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say one, two, three, and then I'm gonna take a picture on three. One, two, three. Now here's what I want you to um, these. Um, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to play with me here. So, so Crystal and Ruby, I want you to look to your left. All right, just, just, all right. Mom, I want you to look to your right. All right, Mark, I want you to look down. Abigail, I want you to look to your right. Yes, just look that way. Dad, I want you to look up. Uh, Bradley and Mackenzie, I want you to look to your left. Look left. Oh. Nikki, left. Nikki. Yeah, that's good. Nikki, I want you to look up. And Jack, I want you to look to your right. No, Jack, you look up too. And I'm going to take a picture. Oh, All right, it's kind of like a Brady what Bunch look. Who about, about us? who about who? Oh, Patty. Jennifer. Patty. Oh, 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 you guys are in the middle. So you're in the exact of my friend here. So Jennifer, you look one direction and Al, you look the other. And and Patty, you look to your left. It's fine. All right. Now do this. Uh, okay. I'm going to look down. All right. Let's do that for a moment. Looking down. One, two, three. All right. All right, so I'll send this pic to you all here in a moment. Uh, <laughs> hey, Spencer, that soccer ball's on There we go. And so, uh, anyway, I, I mean, uh, I don't have, you know, I'm, I don't have anything to say or to, uh, if anyone wants to share or talk or keep on in the conversation, I think this is a great thing that happened today. And uh, I'm so glad. I mean, think of it. Even though it's technology, it's great that that everybody. I mean, everybody. There's nobody missing right now. Yeah. Immediate family and wives and or husbands. They're all here. So yeah. that's that's and grandkids. That's pretty cool. Um, Wait, Dad. Yes. I want to come over. <laughs> okay. What you are you talking to me? Or are you coming talking to somebody else on here? I'm talking to you. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. We're gonna make that happen. To see Patty and you. Yes. Abigail's been self quarantined even before they started doing this. So about the middle of February. <laughs> Abigail, are you getting emotional? I'm tired of being in the house. Oh my goodness. Who is who's tired of being in the house? Anybody here? Me too, Abby. We're all tired, Ab. This has been hard I'm bored on a lot in the of house us. and I'm in house board. Yes. Board. Yes. Yes. I have to put my job on hold. So Yes. People aren't working. Some are staying at home. We're still yes. giving meals. So Ab. Oh well, Jack. Oh, wait a minute. There's one person missing. Oh, Max. Oh. Max. Yeah. What? Max is missing. He's not, He's on, not on here, Ab. He's just oh, missing. Right. I mean, everybody was here, but I, I, I wanted to include that. He, he, uh, he can't. He doesn't I, like video. Okay. I don't know where. I don't know where he's. Okay. Well, cool. Well, cool. 
Well, uh, that's probably bad enough, isn't it? That's about a wrap. Yeah, it up. happy Easter. Yeah, happy yeah. Easter. Yeah. Good everybody. to see you today, Mackenzie. Great to see you too, Ab. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Mackenzie, you don't yeah. really talk too much of us anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta hit me up on Facebook. There you I go. I have you on Facebook. You never messaged me back. Uh -oh. <laughs> I gotta check my messages. So, uh, how, so, okay, let's, it's, um, <laughs> it's 81 degrees here. How, what, how cold is it up there in Chicago? Uh, I don't know. What's it at like in Chillicothe? What's it like in Olathe? What's the worst comparison weather here? What? It's uh, it's 40 it's degrees here. in Olathe. It's 40? Yep. 50, 40 in here, Stan says. 40 degrees? Goodness, it's 81 here. What's? I didn't realize it'd be that much of a difference. It's what, 62 it's here in Chillicothe. It's 462 in Chillicothe. Huh? I don't think that thermometer is right. It's been 62 all day. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm not Jennifer, what's it doing up there in uh, the great state of Illinois? It's uh, 64 degrees. Oh, well, it's, okay. there it's, must... it's a hot summer day. It's 64. Man, I'd bottle that up. I'd love to have that down here. <laughs> yeah, we, we just had a cold front come oh, through nice. here, and it's, we've had an inch of rain today. <laughs> and, uh, Oh, it may yeah, it must be going. It may hit chilly. It must be probably going to be cooling off. Maybe if it's heading that direction. It's supposed to get down to twenty tonight. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's it's coming yeah. your way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what said is fifty-five degrees here. Okay. Fifty-five. Well, we might. I don't know if that's going to run through, make it further south or not. If we get that or not, right now it's really nice and sunny. Uh, yeah, we are, it's supposed. It's going to be twenty-nine degrees tomorrow. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're going to be 29 degrees and in the 40s the rest of the month almost. Man. So, uh, Mackenzie, what's your, uh, the Bradley and the family out there, what are you all going to be eating? Have you eaten yet? What's, what's on the agenda? What's on the food? Uh, we already ate. We had hamburgers. We already ate. We grilled out hamburgers, and then they're playing uh, patch right what? now in the yard, and then we're... Um, we did cascarones and we just been, I mean, it's a beautiful day, so. Yeah, it is. We're just it's hanging light. out. It's super windy and cool. Like, it feels good, even though it's a little warm. But we're just hanging out. Anybody else got plans later? Or as far as Easter, what did, uh, Crystal, you talked about that uh, you served shortly today. What's what's that all about? What's that? Serve shortly for, for, for your oh, Easter meal? Oh, oh, oh. yes, uh, yes. What are you eating? Mark sm um, smoked a pork um, butt <laughs> overnight, and we did carnitas tacos and hey. molly cakes. That sounds good. Patty, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. What's our Easter meal going to be? Well, I already looked up to see what restaurants are open today, so we do have choices. <laughs> All right. We've got pizza, pizza delivery, I think. That Patty. might be it. <laughs> No, no pizza, Matthew. Never pizza. Patty. Patty. No. Patty. Patty. It's going to be Mexican food, of course. Patty. Patty. Yes, ma'am. If there is something good, I'm coming up for it. <laughs> yes. I'll come pick you up, Abigail. I'll pick you up. It's good. Uh, we're going to have tacos and we're going to have uh, some elote. Uh, you, should bring that up you should bring that up here. <laughs> So, yeah. Yes, maybe you can make some of your uh, green salsa verde with chips, your your uh, avocado, and anyway. Uh, yeah, Patty's discovered the art of cooking this last month, so she's really been getting into it. She's really been putting on the dog. And uh, she has been. And I've I've rediscovered my passion for eating food, and um, <clears throat> so anyway. What Jack? He's not on. Is Jack there or is he just off video? Yeah, I'm here. He's there. So, Jack, what are you doing? What's the latest in I school? I don't see a video. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. My video must. Is that, am I? Hey, yeah, you're on. Up? We see you now. Hey, Abby. What? I have a surprise for you. Sorry, what did you guys say? Oh, sorry, sorry. We're just asking how you doing. Well, how are you spending your time? You work. Tell us where you're working. What's going on there? Uh, yeah, I've been working at Chipotle uh, quite a bit lately. Just 
yeah, doing that and then hanging out at home, not a whole lot. Cool. Patty. Yeah. And then Ruby, where's Ruby at? There she is. So Ruby, how tall are you now? Um, but last we measured about five three. She's she's almost as tall as I am. <laughs> oh wow, she's gonna have a mess to clean up. Oh, these are everywhere. Patty. Uh, yeah. So Ruby, uh, Ruby, what grade are you in now? Six. Sixth, going on eighth, ninth, seventh, going on seventh. You're not, you're not looking at boys now, are you? No. no. Oh, she's now you're smiling. Yeah, uh oh, uh oh, Crystal, she's 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 yeah. smiling. I'm staying out of it. I'm the nice one. Mark wants to get involved. That's up to him. Yeah. <laughs> There's a boy she likes named Arnie. Arnie. No. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Well. Uh, <laughs> That's, yep, that's that smile. I can see I can see your teeth from here. That means she's got Arnie on the mind. She's just mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what about Jack? What about there. Jack? Where is yeah, he? There. Oh, there he is. He's got lots of Jack. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jack, have you got that car yet? Are you uh? No, um, I was, I'd have, I'm still looking for cars and stuff. Um, uh -huh. I would have gotten my license this month, but with the whole, with all the oh stuff my. going on, the DMV and all that's closed, so I can't. Oh, that must be awful. It is, yeah, I'm, it's pretty annoying. I was, I was really excited to get it. But. I bet, I bet. I would, oh, you wait your whole teenage life to get ready to that point and then, COVID-19 kicks in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jack. Yeah? The three of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Ab, yeah, there's only one of him. You see three? Yes, I yeah. see yeah. one. Yeah, what do you mean? Behind them. Don't you what see are you talking three, about? Man? Abigail, what you can talk see? to the one in the middle. Talk to the one in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and I see something above your head. No, uh, that might be my ceiling fan. It's being kind of weird with the. Oh, it's trying to, oh, the bat to take it at. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Patty, how's work going over there at. Uh, you're working from home during COVID 19. How's that going? Patty, did, did you hear me? Can you hear me? Wait, who are you, who are you asking? Well, Patty. who else here works at Centene Corporation? I think it's only you. <laughs> Well, He's I asking think you. Jennifer is going to be there soon, right, Jennifer? Well, I mean, not. I, I had wanted to, but now I'm working at the county. If I work there for 10 years, they pay off my student loans. Nice. And that doesn't, 17 does not qualify for that. So I'm yeah. stuck in the county for 10 years until I can get my loans paid off. Okay. Well, we're working from home until uh, May 31st. So that was like. It was like perfect timing with no cars, so I'm not in a rush to buy one. Although Matt oh, keeps, man. although Matt keeps reminding me that I should probably get one right now. Yeah. I figured that the car lots might be hurting to get some move That's some cars. That's true. You might get a really good deal. Mm -hmm. on oh, right. Well, I was gonna go see about trading my car in because because they're not selling anything, they are dying to get cars off their lot. So I'm hoping I can get a way better interest rate and a better deal in my car. I tell you now, yeah. good look. My daughter has a repo and a form of credit. She got a 2020 at 0.9 APR. Oh my goodness! Oh, wow. Without a whole time, and she only yeah. has a so this is the time to get a car. Yeah, and yeah. it is. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So that hopefully is. Tomorrow, maybe I'll be able to trade mine in and get something else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I should go get that Camaro after all. <laughs> Patty. <laughs> well, just make sure it's a super sport. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Patty. Yes, ma'am. 
get a car that my work took can fit in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. You're thinking ahead. Yeah, so I can ride with you. Well, speaking Thanks. of having a car that can fit different types of things, Patty is considering some things. Patty, would you like to make an announcement to the White family? Are we expecting? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it kind of sounded that way, didn't it? But um, I don't know. Are we? I don't. Um, no. <laughs> yes, um, I am my my uh, daughter is pregnant. She's four months pregnant. So, yes. so Patty is a uh, is a grandmother for the first time. So for the um, be her, her oldest son is, yes, yeah. Not Georgia. Not Georgia. Not Georgia. <laughs> Nina. Yes. Yes. I'm going to be a duck aunt. Yes, you are. Okay. So I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold this, and All I'm right. going to hold it's, my head. It's getting busy, so I don't know if um, it might be a time to get yeah, on a good note. All right, so everyone wave. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.